Hi there, I'm Alex Hilkertz. I'm an American watercolor artist living in Paris, and I'm honored to be a part of this exhibition and festival. Today I'm going to demonstrate some of my techniques for painting Parisian cafes. Uh, I love these Paris cafes. They, uh, they always have this bright pop of red for these awnings. Um, the cafes are usually the, the center of each neighborhood. They're really the life of the neighborhood. So they're, they're endlessly fascinating to me. Um, they bring people together. They've got this vibrant uh, color scheme. Um, and when the light in Paris is just right, uh, it can't be beat. So let me turn the camera around and we'll get started. So here's my pencil sketch. I've, I've drawn this in already on my page, uh, just because sometimes the, the pencil is a little bit harder to show up on camera. Um, I've got my palette laid out. I'm, I'm left-handed, so I like to have all my tools laid out on the left-hand side of things. Uh, my water's up here just off camera, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna dive in. I actually, I'm gonna tape this off uh, first just to give myself a nice clean edge when this is all said and done. I always, I always tape off, if I'm gonna mask off a painting, I do it after I've done the initial sketch. This gives me sort of a final chance to, to finalize that composition. If I want a little bit more sky, I can move that up. If I want to bring it down, I can bring it down. Um, but uh, I always do that after I've done a sketch. Let me just push in a little bit. And I'm, I'm just going to dive in. Uh, I'll sort of call out the colors as I go. This is, a, this is a scene here in Paris. I'm using a reference photo that I took just the other day of this, uh, this cafe. There's a cafe down here on the street uh, with this brilliant red awning. The building is up above. There's some sunlight is, is kind of coming from the upper left. So there's some interesting shadows on this building here. We'll, we'll get into all of that. Uh, but I want to just lay in some sky to begin with. I'm going to do this with, with straight uh, cobalt blue. I, I got my paper a little bit damp to begin with. Um, it's nice to have sort of patches of, of light and dark. I mean, patches of dry versus wet. Uh, which gives me some variety in these clouds. And I want to fade it out as it gets sort of further into the distance. It'll be a little bit more saturated up here. I can, I can add in a little bit more. Oops. <laughs> Getting some fluff and things in there. But um, just a little bit more saturation up above and, and uh, kind of fades down as it gets further away or closer to the horizon. Let me bring this down a little bit as it gets into that roof. Um, so that's kind of all I want to do there. I just laid that in fairly quickly. Um, just to suggest some sky. Uh, have a little bit of variety. This will this will blend and 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 sort of dry on its own and get some interesting shapes. Just to suggest some cloud patterns, I can maybe tip that a little bit. Maybe spray it with some more water, but I think I'll leave it alone. Next up, I want to use some raw sienna for most of this building shape uh, in the sunlight. Yeah, I just I want to scrub this on fairly loosely, and I'm doing this on dry paper, so I get um, some of that, uh, some of the white paper um, kind of shows through, and this can blend up into the sky. I don't I don't need to be precious about painting within the lines. 
and actually this this side of the building is very very pale very white but i can maybe just do a couple loose pieces here and there that might be enough um actually maybe right up here as well this is gonna just get into the sunlight up here yeah we'll, we'll leave that alone so i did this fairly quickly as you know while i've got that going on i want to um just push in a slightly warmer color like a kind of an orange this is a this is this color is called quinacridone sienna by daniel smith but it's uh it's a very vibrant orange color um, so you can use something like a what are the other ones um like a cadmium orange or something would would give a very similar feel uh, and I just want to, this This is still a little bit damp, so I just want to push in a little bit of this color just to give me some variety on uh, where this sunlight is, is going to hit this building, just to break up the monotony a little bit. Um, this is already drying on me, so I want to, I'll leave that alone. That's enough for now. Uh, also, up in the sky, actually, this is, the sky is still kind of wet. I can just have some of that color peek up into the sky on these Paris buildings. There are these great um, chimney chimney pots, these kind of terracotta chimney pots. Um, I'll come in later and do some nice detail with that, but but for now I just want to lay in some of this uh, some of this underpainting, some of this groundwork to to give me some give me somewhere to go later. Um, so that feels pretty good. I think I want to get into, you know, I'm going to get right into the red of this awning. Um, and I'll bring this color down. Uh, you'll see what I'm, you'll see what I mean in a second. There's, there's a few different types of red I'm going to use. This is... A pyrrole scarlet, which is a very vibrant, bright red, kind of a very classic, uh, classic red. Um, and I want to, let's see, it's going to come right up against this other building. There's a few details around here. Uh, the sunlight is, is again, it's going to, a lot of this is will be in shadow, but for now at least, I want to get this, this color laid in, and then um, once it's dry, I can come in with some shadow colors and really, um, really uh, emphasize some of those finer details. But what I want to do, do is I want to pull this color all the way down into the street. Let me grab a larger brush and uh, and this will just kind of come all the way down into this. There's, this is all going to be in shadow down here but for now at least I want to have this be nice and bright. I'll just blend this in a little bit, just painting with clean water, just to soften that edge a little bit. Um, actually, I want to get that a little bit brighter. Again, because this will, this will be covered up by shadow, and so, uh, <laughs> It looks a bit like a mess, but I'm. But this will really be just sort of an underpainting that, um, 
that will give my color somewhere to go and it, it'll just create this really nice warmth. I want to bring this color up a little bit as well. I'm just using a feather brush, uh, I mean a dagger brush, uh, to feather some of this color um, just to sort of break up the kind of the perfectness of that line. Um, but this feels pretty good. Uh, again, this is there's going to be this nice deep shadow. This this part of the awning is really the only part that's hitting the sunlight. So so that will be very very bright. The rest of it's going to get knocked down into shade. So, uh, but I want to get that all laid in, uh, kind of in one go. And while that's drying, I think I want to. Uh, you know what? I can, <laughs> I can, I can maybe. Oh, this is already dry. I was gonna get that coming over a little bit into this building. It's already a little bit dry, so that's okay. <clears throat> All right. While that is drying, I think I will maybe concentrate on a different part of this painting. I think I'll come back up to this roof line. Uh. Let me get the, my red water out of the way, because otherwise everything will start to look a little pink, and that's enough red for now. Actually, I'll wipe it out of my palette as well, because I don't want to... I don't want that to be in the way. So I'm going to mix up... This is my favorite sort of mix, which is Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Sienna. Uh, this gives a very neutral color, very neutral gray. But rather than using a neutral tint, I like to mix my gray, mix my grays uh, with a cool and a warm color. There's a, there are many ways to get to gray. This uh, ultramarine and burnt sienna happens to work particularly well for Paris rooftops. Um, and I just want to kind of get this going, sort of carve around some of these windows that are up here on this, on this roof. The paper is a little bit damp, but that is okay. That is sort of what I want. I, it's nice to have a bit of a soft edge to some of these, so things aren't quite so perfect. There's a couple of these dormer windows right up on top of this roof line, so just want to get carve around those. Feel a little bit of that one there. And then this sort of curves around the corner here. I can feel this paper is a little bit damp, but it's it's okay to rest my hand on it for now. And I can carry on down the the side of the building here. There's a few little details as we go down. I want to rinse out my brush a little bit because as we get further down the street, these colors will get a little bit more pale. A little bit more pale and a little bit more blue, actually. So uh, I can just add in a little bit more of my ultramarine into the mix. And that gives this sense of distance. I can also dab that with a paper towel if it's feeling a little too bright. There's all kinds of balconies and dormer windows and chimneys and things um, that are super fun to to paint on these on these Paris streets. And while this is still a little bit wet, I can. I can just push in 
maybe a little bit more burnt sienna in some places. Uh, maybe a little bit more blue in other places. Um, this is, uh, I'm just letting these colors mix on the page. I'm just getting a little bit more ultramarine blue. Uh, it's a little bit, this is also, it's a little bit dry already. I let that dry a little too much, but that's okay. I can come back in with some shadow colors and fix a lot of that up. But I want to have a little bit of variety going on in that rooftop. It's not just an even coat of color. There's actually, um, you know, there's some patina going on. There's some different, uh, different values happening. Might as well just put in a couple of this, these window details up here. This is these, uh, the window panes actually, they're kind of reflecting the sky. So we see they look a little bit blue. Maybe mix in a little bit more uh, burnt sienna to kind of neutralize that color. So now it's a little bit more gray. So these windows aren't all the exact same color. It's maybe a little too brown, but that's okay. Just want to sort of suggest where these are. I don't want to get too detailed because I'll I'll come in later with some nice shadows and get those get those a little bit more where I want them to be. Uh, but this is a nice kind of place to start at least. So it quickly starts to come into focus. Um, I've really only used a handful of colors at this point and I'm gonna keep playing with these just handful of colors. There's a few of these windows down the side here. Let's see, where does this one wanna be? Ah, right in here, there's something darker. As we kinda of go down the face, this, the left face of this building, these you really only see a, 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 it's kind of a sliver of a line <laughs> where that window is. This ground is still a little bit damp. There's still some moisture in there, so I want to give that another little minute or two. Um, before I come in and, and do some, some pretty dramatic shadow details over the top of all of this. And then I, can, then I can continue with a lot of these window details that I'm playing with. But at least for now, I can get some of this going on. These are some shadow, just some shadows up under this, uh, it's not even a balcony, it's just, well, maybe it's a very thin balcony right up on that top floor. Um, so I just came in with a very cool shadow color, and now I'm coming in with a, my brush has some of that quinacridone sienna on it, um, that that bright orange color, and that, that works as a, as a great kind of reflected light color that, you know, if light is bouncing around and getting up into some of these details, um, it gives us a really nice illusion of reflected light happening. All right, let's, uh, let's, let's put some shadows on this. So like I said, the sunlight is coming from the upper left. So it's shining down like this. There's a row of buildings on the left-hand side of, of this other side of the street that we can't see, but they're casting a shadow across the street um, 
hitting this awning, kind of raking across the, the street here. So let's, uh, I'm just, I'm gonna do this with kind of a larger mop brush because I really wanna cover a lot of ground. And I, well, I'll have a couple brushes going on because sometimes you want a nice large brush to cover a lot, a big area, and then something that's a little bit smaller to get some, some of the finer detail happening. So I just wanna mix up uh, in my palette, you can kind of see here, um, a nice big lake of this shadow color. This is, a, I'm using the same mixture of ultramarine and burnt sienna to sort of get a pretty strong gray. But then I just wanna touch a little bit of quinacridone red into this. This is a very sort of pink red, and that will just tip that shadow a little warmer, just makes it a little bit more, um, gives it a little bit some lavender into it. And that is, that is a really nice color. Let me, let me see, I can just do that, all of this. Is that what I want? That feels pretty good. That's gonna be all of this in here. There's this shadow like this. And it comes down here. I don't want to do that just yet. Uh, I want to get it. I want to maybe lighten it a little bit. So I just want to get a little bit more water in my brush, maybe a little bit more sort of cobalt in there as it goes down the side of the street. It's a little bit cooler. Um, yeah, that feels better. I think I want to just soften this as well. And then this will all be in shadow across here, across the bottom. I'm going to also, <laughs> juggling brushes here, I'm getting a, um, this is a color called Deep Scarlet, which is a very dark red. And that is perfect for where this shadow comes across this awning right here. And that can mix with that, that shadow color already that's there. So that feels pretty good. Come back with my, uh, the other deep kind of blue purpley shadow that I have and just bring that along the bottom of this awning. Again, I'm sort of, Keeping there's a there's some sunlight hitting some detail over here. That's what that's what this these flakes of light are. But basically, I want to cover up everything that I've painted red with this this new darker blue, this sort of dusty blue, and all of this. <clears throat> Actually, let's let's just have it crawl up this foreground building a little bit. I got to make this quite a bit darker. <laughs> 
I'm just keeping, sort of keep mixing in some of this ultramarine, some of this burnt sienna, really to get this, uh, get this nice, but this, this feels okay. Maybe this wants to be darker. <clears throat> and then, uh, And then at this far end of the street, let's get that, I want that to sort of be a pale gray, I think. Maybe, maybe with some of this. Some of this quinacridone. So this is way down at the end of the street. There's, uh, oh, look at that, it's already dry, that's okay. Um, these buildings way down here are going to be in deep shadow. Except for the tops of them. It might be nice. I can, I can put in some details of little roofs, little chimneys, some little details. There's gonna have some windows going on, but this is way down at the end of the street, so I don't wanna to be too, um, I don't wanna be too detailed with any of that. It's really just to give this feeling of this shadow that's happening. It's really about this area that I wanna concentrate on. So this is this is feeling okay. And while I'm while this is all still pretty wet, I can uh, I just want to darken this quite a bit under this cafe. I'm going to do quite a bit more work under the cafe awning itself, but for now, I can at least get that quite a bit darker. Uh, this will really give the, that illusion of some depth happening. And this paper's fairly wet still, it's fairly damp, but I think that's going to work with, that's gonna that's gonna help us as these colors sort of blend sort of mix a little bit kind of soften some of these edges it's not uh, it's not too perfect and that's that's really okay Yeah, maybe leave some of that alone. There's this great crosswalk that I want to, I don't want to forget about. So I'll, I'll get that in there as well. But this, that's a pretty good um, sort of representation of what I wanted to do with this shadow. Uh, now the idea is to let this dry. This, this bit is almost dry already. Um, this is almost dry. And then, uh, you know, I can come in and, and darken a lot of the details around here. So I'm going to switch to a, a slightly thinner brush um, with a nice point on it. And um, just using that same mixture of color, of pigments, my ultramarine and burnt sienna, I can get a pretty nice... Yeah, I really want that to be a little bit dry, but that's we're okay. I can get some nice um, kind of detail sh shadows along a lot of this. Uh, <clears throat> there's sort of st there's a lot of stonework um, that really shows off the uh, the details on this building. There are windows in here. Yeah, that, that'll, this'll work, this helps.
and I'm using this brush almost like um, like a calligraphy brush, holding it sort of vertical to the page. And then you can get these very fine marks with it. It's got a lot of pigment in it, so I can I can I can just sort of keep drawing around some of these details. There's these deep, great deep shadows that I'll get to now, I think. In some of these windows on the facade of this building. Here, let me, I'll just push in a little bit so you can see what's going on a little bit better. Just want to, I don't want to be too perfect about it because it's nice to have a little bit of imperfection in these, in this type of painting. Um, it's sort of a version of realism, but it's not, it's certainly not a hyper-realistic depiction of what I'm doing. So I can, can be a little bit uh, more expressive with some of these marks. You know, just to just to kind of suggest where some of that stonework is. Um, there's actually this really interesting arch window here that sort of curves gracefully over, and then this this window is really deeply inset back here. So it kind of does something like this. <laughs> I can <clears throat> get my get my dagger brush and just feather out some of that yeah soften that edge a little bit yeah that feels that's pretty good shadow on this. So I'm just going around uh, some of these windows and just emphasizing, you know, where there's shadows, where there's, uh, so you just, you feel like these windows are a little bit inset into the, into the facade itself. They're not, it's not just a blob of paint on the face of the window. They're, on the face of the building, there's actually some dimension to it. This is another sort of arched window. I can push a little bit. Actually, you know, I'm gonna I'll push some up warmer color up under there, just so you feel that reflected light hitting up in there. It feels a little bit better. I might do that on this one too. All right, I'll just, I'm gonna keep kind of working my way down. There's a few little lines, sort of perspective lines to tell us that this is a, a street diminishing into the distance here. Not everything's perfect. Some of these are a little dirty, but just want to get a few more of these windows down the side of this building. They get a little bit less precise as we get further away from us. 
Um, and I don't want to paint every window. Some of them have shutters closed. Some of them are catching the light in different ways. So it's not, um, you know, they're not, they're not perfect little <laughs> things all in a row. That's okay. And, uh, and they're, and the, the, saturation is much less we're, we're way down the street now so these are they're going to be a little bit fainter as we get further away look at some of these there's there's all these now shop fronts along this the street here i just want to get a little bit thicker mixture of paint Maybe some other awnings. The suggestion of people. Darker doorways. But again, these are all, uh, you know, we're sort of far away here. So it's, we don't have to be very precise with our details. Actually, while I'm here, there is this curb that curves around the side and loops up the street like that. That's pretty nice. Does the same thing over here. <clears throat> I think what I want to do, this, uh, there is this crosswalk here and I, I don't, I don't want to forget about it, so I want to, I've got this kind of nice muddy gray in my palette, I might as well use it. Um, and I just want to, it's going to be right in here. I'm going to paint everything except the crosswalk. So it's got these, um, you know, it's one of these kind of zebra, zebra crossings. And uh, let me do the top of it as well. That'll just connect everything together. And then blend this away at the bottom. So that, that feels pretty good. So we just have a little bit more perspective going on. Maybe I'll continue that. It kind of gets all the way over here to this curb. It's got a little bright, but that's okay. There's sort of sunlight happening, so it's okay. You know, I can, I'll do some scraping as well, actually, maybe I'll, yeah, here we go. I can, I can just scrape with my fingernail or, better yet, I've got this, this little plastic tool. I think this is for carving um, clay, but it's, it's, it makes a really nice, you can kind of scrape with it if your, if your paint is, is damp to get these nice perspective lines happening. You've got to do it on wet paint or sort of damp paint. So um, sometimes, it, sometimes it works better than others, but that's all right. Uh, we are coming together. I think I want to throw a few details on this foreground structure, um, just so it doesn't look entirely empty. And this, I think, wants to be fairly dark, uh, kind of in the same world. So I'm going to mix up those same two, <laughs> my same favorite colors, my ultramarine and my burnt sienna. Um, yeah, that, that, you know, you can get almost black with that combination. And that is nice. This will, there's this, there is a balcony here. And it's got some stone, stonework on it, under it. Uh, so we'll, we'll try to emphasize that. Yeah, that, that's, this is gonna work. It helps if it's in the right perspective. <laughs> A 
actually I want to I'll use this larger brush there's some some doorways here that I just want to block in really quickly again I don't I don't want to get caught up in too much of this detail because we're really this is not the focal point of the of the painting the focal point is this cafe so anything I do further away from the focal point I don't I really don't want to emphasize too much but I do want to suggest that there are things here so there's going to be some windows a little bit of shadow at the top of the window um, another sort of decorative stonework thing up here maybe another one way up top and then right up here is another another one that feels pretty good so that uh it just gives enough enough for your eye to kind of land on um to tell you oh there's something over here but it's not it's not really going to draw your attention you know what i mean i can do a little bit more on that uh in a second but let's come back i'm just noticing now there are these deep shadows up way up on top of these dormers these cast shadows so i want to make those a little bit more blue they're against this slate roof um and they're they're just on the right side of these windows these dormer windows so just by giving them a little bit of definition uh that sort of pops out to us Do it again on this one up here. Give that a little bit of definition. Maybe a darker window in there. Uh, this one's got some nice deep shadows happening as well. That feels pretty good. Just sort of seeing what needs to be, or what wants to be emphasized and what can stand to be a little less sort of de-emphasized. Uh, this is feeling pretty good. I think in the few minutes remaining, I just want to really bring our attention into this cafe. Everything's feeling pretty good, um, but the, the cafe itself is a little bland at this point. And so... Again, I just want to mix up a very, very rich mixture of this ultramarine. And that can come right on under here, under this awning. <clears throat> For the doorway of the cafe, maybe there's, uh, there's some windows with some reflected light happening. There's some people, there's a little bit of activity. You know, and by darkening that, we really push that into the distance so it gives us some nice depth. I think while I've got this deep mixture, now is when I can do some of the... On this corner, there's some, there's some posts on the street. Uh, these are very sort of Parisian. <laughs> All these sort of posts to keep... Give a little bit of emphasis on things. There's actually a um, traffic light here. Let's see, that'll be something like this. Maybe a... I'm gonna scrub that with my finger a little bit. Um, 
while I've got that dark color, I might as well, there's a few extra, a few other pieces down here. I can just throw in some, some details. A little bit of detail on top of the awning. Emphasize that window. Maybe bring that curb around. Yeah, it feels, it feels good. So this is really coming into focus. Um, yeah, you know, I want to do a couple more things. I just want to show you a little trick. Just got a few minutes remaining, so I want to kind of put on some final touches. Oh, I know, I never did my, uh, my chimney tops. So I got to do that. Um, okay, I'll do that now. Right up on top, there's these, like I said, there's these terracotta chimney pots, uh, which are such a classic Parisian feature. And um, again, using that quinacridone sienna, I can just touch a couple, they're almost like flames, you know, they're just these little details that uh, that sometimes you don't even register them consciously but they do they just add a little bit actually i want to emphasize the chimneys there's these horizontal chimneys up here i mean um kind of stripes of where the stonework is that feels that's better what was i gonna do ah i remember I I want to uh, if I can figure this thing out I can use uh, an exacto knife uh, which has this very sharp blade on it and this is a nice tool to um, you can actually scrape the paper scrape some of the paint off to get back to your white paper um, and this is nice to just get a few uh, kind of detail, like little highlights. Maybe things got away from you in places. Um, it's nice for, I can get a little bit of light into this under the awning here. Uh, it's still pretty wet, but um, you know, you kind of pick out some, some spots. Maybe even scrape. There's some detail in the street. Um, but this is a nice, uh, this is best done on dry paper. I usually do this right at the end. You can use, uh, I have some white gouache in my palette. I, I use a gel pen sometimes if I want to do this, but I don't know, there's something Something kind of satisfying about actually scraping the paper and, and getting getting back to white paper. Uh, and this is one of those things that you really, uh, just a little bit goes a long way. Just a few little details. Just, just tends to lighten things up in an interesting way. Um, I could do a little bit more, but I, you know, this is, you can quickly get carried away. So it's best to, <laughs> it's best to just do a bit and sort of step away. And this, I like to do this right where the focal point is. You know, this is a focal point is, or where your eye is drawn to is where the most contrast is and where the most detail is. So that's really right in this area. Uh, contrast of light and dark, contrast of this pop of red, um, and contrast of details. Uh, I just have a few minutes left, but I, um, I do want to use just a pen. Let's see, this will, yeah, this is fine. Just to give, there's a few kind of details of stonework. Um, I don't always use ink, but it can be nice uh, for some of these very last minute details. There's a few 
banister railings on some of these windows. Um, actually up here, there's a, this is a balcony that, that has a nice banister. And sometimes a fine liner or a fountain pen um, is the right tool. Again, just a suggestion of things. Not to, not to be too sort of sketchy about it, but, um, you know, sometimes it's enough to, to give a little bit of emphasis to things. All right, I think, <laughs> I think we're about done. That was, uh, that was pretty speedy, but I'm gonna take the tape off and we'll see what we got, see what we have. Should reveal some nice clean edges. Um, it's always very satisfying. So there we go. There's my there's my Paris Cafe. Um, here I'll I'll uh, I'll zoom in a little bit so we can just see um, kind of some of that detail or or lack thereof. It's fairly loose. Uh, I was moving fairly quickly. I might continue tinkering. There's maybe a few things to add here and there. But that is, uh, that is kind of my process. Again, I, it was really a, a fairly limited palette. I know I, I didn't show off my whole palette, but I think you got the idea. Um, cobalt, ultramarine, burnt sienna, raw sienna, pyral scarlet, deep scarlet, quinacridone sienna. Um, really sort of six colors maybe, but you can do a lot with that. So yeah. There, there it is. I might keep tinkering, but that is, um, that's the bulk of it. So there you have it. There is my uh, example of um, a Paris Cafe. Uh, like I said, I used a fairly limited palette, but that's, uh, that's really fitting for this subject matter. You can do a lot with um, just, a, just a handful of colors uh, and the suggestion of details. So uh, it was a lot of fun to demonstrate some of my techniques for you today and uh, have a great rest of the festival. Take care.